Yeah, so basically we got an update uh, from the land bank authority. They file a report every quarter, you know, four times a year. The land bank provides a report to the city council that updates them on like the size of their inventory, how their programs are going, um, you know, progress toward key metrics and just kind of keeping that oversight relationship with the city council. Um, so I'm going to keep watch of later this year. Actually, they're in the process of negotiating a uh memorandum of understanding that kind of sets up the relationship into the future. Um, but this uh, second quarter report showed uh, that basically more homes have been reconveyed uh, back to the land bank uh, in 2023 than any year, um, you know, dating back to basically when the land bank started in 2014, 2015. Um, so basically what happens when you buy a, a home from the land bank um, through one of the rehabilitation programs, uh, you do it through a reconveyance deed which basically means that if you do not keep up with the compliance um, that's required, the land bank can uh, actually reclaim that property and bring it back into its inventory. It's something they really don't like to do. You know, the whole point of the land bank is to get mm -hmm. properties uh, transformed into better uses and get it offloaded kind of this public uh, body, this um, interestingly kind of set up public body. Um, but 958 homes were turned back over to the land bank in 2023. And that's mm. uh, more than twice as many as in 2022. You can kind of make out the chart there on the bottom. You know, the vast majority of homes achieved compliance. But I do think it's notable that that you saw such a large jump in the number of, um, you know, houses that basically failed uh, to get renovated on time. And the land bank, just so you know, like our audience knows, Compliance really comes down to whether the home is inhabitable. So the things that they kind of look for are whether it has a functional sink, um, you know, functional kitchen and bathroom are kind of the big ones, working furnace and hot water heater, active connections for utilities like, you know, electricity, gas and water. Um, and, you know, I, I think it kind of speaks to how difficult it is to repair houses in Detroit that we're, we're seeing such a big number now. And and that's kind of what I wanted to speak to. Uh, the the next story kind of goes into this too. Just um, what's happening in the city of Detroit with the housing stock, and a lot more people uh, looking at what that will be to renovate a lot of the properties. Uh, it can take a lot to get things up to compliance, just because of what's available in the market for contracting. Contracting has. I guess always been a big business and that contracting, you know, getting those porches fixed, getting those roofs fixed, getting the gutters, getting the electrical, getting plumbing. And some of these things in these older structures are so interconnected. Being a person that has two properties that were built in the 40s. Uh, yeah, it can be like, um, you know, people will come by and say, man, you know, when are you going to get this fixed and when are you going to get that fixed? Meaning like the outside aesthetics of things, but the guts of a home. Um, I've done, uh, I, I've had to fix the run all new uh, piping into homes. I've had to run all new electrical. Uh, paying for a roof was, I think, the largest check I ever wrote in my life. Uh, and it was around the time when, when my mom passed. So I had a little bit of life insurance money, but that was $35,000 that I had to pay for a roof. And uh, that's just for one of the properties. And I'm just, you know, looking up every winter when we think about, you know, what winter can do, the, the wear and tear on shingles and what that can be for the next roof thinking to myself like man i hope that this next roof is holding on because i don't know if i'm gonna have another thirty five thousand dollars anytime soon uh especially with like the rate of inflation and finding uh, the right contractors too and we know some of that sometimes these projects can lead to um one problem can connect to the next problem so like you know like for instance uh, flooding in the basement. Flooding in the basement can lead to possibly having mold. Having mold can lead to a whole different type of clean out uh, and damages and repairs. Like, you know, uh, sometimes home repair can be a never ending ditch that you seem like you just keep digging in where it's like, man, my God. And then the people that will do it because the other reality is there are 
large groups that have bought like uh sloths worth of homes and contractors can like be contracted to work on like 15 to 25 homes at a time versus somebody like me. I'm just one person. So it's like, would I rather have this consistent work over here where I know I'll be paid over a period of time and that's being managed by a mix of project managers or real estate people or just this one single person that owns one dwelling? Uh, it can be difficult. It can definitely be difficult. Basically, if six months uh, is the kind of initial timeline to your house, uh, you know, on track with compliance in the land bases, it extends that deadline. It doesn't uh, it basically gives people some wiggle room. But yeah. but six months is, uh, you know, it turns out to be not uh, a whole lot of time when you're dealing with all of these issues that, you yeah. know, at the same time, you know, maybe you buy a house that only needs a new water heater and, um, you know, electrical hookups. Maybe you buy a house that requires you know, every, all of the above that we mentioned earlier. Right. Um, it just, it, yeah, between the costs going up, the availability of contractors, because we're in kind of this building situation right now where there's, uh, you know, maybe not as much as there could be, you know, just in terms of like the raw number of contractors, but there's a lot of demand for them right now as well. Um, it's making it tough, but you know, the bottom line is the, the land bank authority reported that they've got a historic high, uh, number of homes that were taken back for, uh, compliance failures. And I think we're going to hear more about why the city council uh, basically filed this report and one of their committees will be discussing it. And, you know, land bank issues are very top of mind right now as they work through this memorandum of understanding that kind of establishes what the future relationship of the land bank and the city is. So definitely a lot to kind of keep watching for there. Yeah. And, and for those people that own, like in live in neighborhoods like mine, there are land bank properties. And then you look at the amount of repair needed for a lot of these to become habitable. Boy, boy. It, it, I mean, Lord knows you, you need a lot more than I think a Home Depot credit card possibly. Uh, and more than likely a skill set. I think that the best people that I've seen approach it are people that already have those skill sets um, with carpentry work and usually a little bit of electrical or plumbing and live in the home and just like piece by piece go from room to room to room and kind of thug it out for a while. Uh, you can reference back to uh, my Detroit is Different interview with Mama Shu, even though that's not in Detroit, but that is in Highland Park, uh, what started Avalon Village and how, you know, things kind of got going there at that home. And that's been the best approach. And that's the other thing. Like a lot of times people are, I think are like thinking, okay, let me buy this house because the framework is good. Cause a lot of the frameworks are amazing for the Detroit housing stock. It's just getting those guts together can be, can be a daunting task to say the least.